Right, well, welcome to Life Hacks. I'm Joe Baines. Uh, I'm a stand up comedian, Joe Baines Comedy, and I'm also a biohacker, uh, effortless biohacking. And um, I'm here at Life Hacks. It's all about finding out what other people know that they've learned to a high degree that could be useful to me or, or to you. So I have with me Ben Chai. Uh, so Ben, do you want to introduce yourself and tell them your Instagram or whatever? Sure, sure. So I'm Ben Chai. I'm a sit-down co co comedian because it gives me a unique uh, kind of differential between the stand-up comedians, because which are the hundreds of them, right? And there's yeah. only one sit-down comedian. So, so that that kind of works for me. You, you can connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, most social media, Ben Chai Official uh, for Instagram and Ben Chai on LinkedIn. Uh, Chai spelt C-H-A-I, courageous, happy, articulate individual. Or, or if you think of Chai tea as in... Um, Indian Chai tea. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So, so that's, that's me. That's how you can con connect with me. And I really don't do sit down co uh, comedy. So don't try and book me. Thank you. <laughs> you never know. Somebody will book you from this. No, yes. Like... We want the one and only sit down comedian. Yeah, let's book him. <laughs> so, so, so Ben, if you were to, before we go into what life hacks you got, if we were to, if you were to look at Ben Chai from the outside, mm. uh, how would you describe Ben Chai? Yes, um, probably he's he's very enigmatic, very creative. Uh, you'll see him in one industry in one moment, and you see him, at, you know, at the top of that industry, and then suddenly he's disappeared from that industry and moved into a totally different one. Uh, gets to uh, a good level in that industry and then vanishes into a different one. Okay. So uh, probably like that, it's like, I don't know how he's able to to get into so many different places, but he, he does that and he seems to have a lot of very interesting people around him and in, in his life. I'm sure you do. I'm sure and, and well no I'm just describing him from oh, right. okay. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's good. Yes. I'm done. yeah I'm answering your question yeah please. no that is yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an expert I'm a professional this is how we do it we rehearsed this over and over again and made sure this was uh this that we did this so this is so it's going according to plan ah, absolutely yeah, is, yeah. yeah and actually that's the other thing nothing ever goes to plan in in his life he seems to deal with very interesting situations and eventually comes out okay. Brilliant. Yeah. And where's Ben Chai from? Where was he born? So he was born in East London, okay. in, in Hackney, Yeah. in a Salvation Army hospital, which apparently burnt down after he was born. So... Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> Satan, Satan. <laughs> I'd, I'd say anything you want. Uh, if you yeah. want me to say tan, I can. Tan, tan, tan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say tan, yeah. <laughs> Any time. Anything you like, yeah. Uh, Damon. Uh, right, so, um, and, and uh, where, wherever you lived around the world, I, I know you've been everywhere, so yeah, where no. have you been? Uh, yeah, so I've been very privileged in my life to, to have worked in different countries and, and live there for anywhere between uh, two weeks to, you know, six months to six years. So um, Iceland, everywhere from Iceland to uh, Angola in, in Africa. Um, yeah, lots of places, uh, a lot of the Eastern European and Western European uh, countries. So France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Spain, <laughs> Italy, so, so, Eastern uh, European countries. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, yeah. I, I, do you want me to draw a picture of that? It's about um, 70 countries. So, so. so in terms of um, which one was the most challenging for you? Most challenging? Uh, yeah. Probably Angola because I was trying to run away from the bodyguards. <laughs> they, didn't, they did not like that. They were <laughs> furious with me. But I felt that they, they, they drew attention to me. Yeah, uh, and I kind of like to be, kind of like, just unseen. 
if if you see what I mean. Yeah, you know, and, if you're and, surrounded by bodyguards, it means yeah, I'm, I'm now like oh, of a bullet. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm worthy of people looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, that that was very challenging. Um, uh, probably another place was um, I, I did a, a gig in in Czech Republic and. The sat nav that I had took me in totally the opposite direction where I was supposed to go, and then it took me on this kind of <laughs> kind of not country road, but if I think it, it took me through this, it wasn't really a park, but it was like a park, and then I'm stuck between the river on this side and a fence there, right? So I can't I can't really move the car. And then it wants me to go over this bridge, which looks like a pedestrian bridge. It looks like the car would collapse. <laughs> I thought, there is just no way I'm driving the car. So I had to gingerly, very carefully reverse the car backwards without falling into the, the, right. riv okay. the river area on the other side. I, th I think also Catalonia had the same thing. I was, it was pitch black. And I'm driving down a mountain, yeah. and at the bottom, the, near the bottom, there's this rock fall. So I couldn't, couldn't, uh, <laughs> couldn't go any further. And I had to. There's no way I could turn around. So uh, down this narrow mountain, I had to reverse upwards in pitch black. <laughs> and you could have just fallen off. I could have just fallen off. So those, well, those didn't, were the didn't. challenging. It means you know how to reverse. It's uh, a very useful skill. Carefully. Yeah. <laughs> very carefully. Yes. It's a very useful skill. Learn to reverse in pitch black. Go, you know, in a... Uh, in a round circular yeah, kind of way. Up, up Without up falling off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah really that, was, yeah. that was... That was... <laughs> Interesting. And, and which has been the easiest and the most pleasant country to work in? I mean, uh, both the, the, the Czech and, and the um, Greek uh, people are just wonderful people. It was just the situation that we yeah. was in. Okay. So in terms of challenging, I, I guess it was uh, um, Qatar because uh, when I would talk to, say, the waiters or the, 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 the people you know, who park, the, the parking attendants, whatever. Yeah, the, valets, yeah. the um The people I was with would be upset with me a little bit. They said, look, you don't talk to the helping staff in, in our country. And, and so I just kept apologizing. I'm saying, I'm sorry where I come from. We talk to everyone. I, if I do it by accident, I hope you'll forgive me. So I just carried on talking. <laughs> and, said, and then afterwards they'd look at me. I'd say, oh, no, I made I've a I've done it again. again. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> so, Sounds like India. So, so it was that kind of hierarchical um, challenge that, that I, I mean, everyone was still pleasant to me, mm. but it, it was challenging for me from the perspective that, you know, I, I, in the days of class, I would, I would be having dinner with, you know, so-called lower class, where essentially what people would classify as poor people. And then, uh, and the next, you know, moment, you know, having lunch with, um, some very wealthy people. So, so my, my life is, so that's, that's kind of how I'm, I'm used to, if you like, working yeah. with, with people. I, I don't see finance really. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, just, it reminds me, I was in India staying mm. with some wealthy doctor. Right. Massive mansion. And it was looked after by this family with a small baby and their, their house was like probably the size of this cupboard, you know, like their right. living space. Yeah. It was, it was on the other side of the garden. Yeah. And it was yeah. like tiny. And I was like, and I remember walking around going, there is no way anyone could live in that. Oh, yeah. there was a family living there. Actually that, what you're saying reminds me, uh, because, uh, you know, I like when I'm visiting countries and working countries, I, I want to see how people live. So somehow I get invited to people's homes. I don't know how, but I do. And in Cuba, uh, you know, this guy befriended me, wanted to make me a meal, invited me to his place. And it was literally like that, like you're saying, a cupboard. And they had, what, six, seven people living in that, that place. And <laughs> for whatever reason, they wanted to cook me a meal. And I'm thinking, I don't know whether I should have this meal. <laughs> I don't know about sanitation and all that kind of stuff. So, so, but, but you were so okay. that was that was that. Yeah. No, that was really challenging. I had to challenge my internal self about yeah. uh, 
you know what and, yeah. and i have a very sensitive stomach so so this is why i actually have never vis- visited india because oh, all my friends have had yeah. even when they've tried not to 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 partake in yeah you know the water somehow they still got what do you call it um, uh, deli 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 deli, 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 deli yeah yeah. So. yeah i mean i've i've had it my brother's had it everybody uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah so that's why i have all my friends said you've got to visit it then so i mean i survived angola because i got food poisoning there and i couldn't get you know in 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 the uk we've got this pink stuff Pepto, whatever, bismuth. Well, anyway, it's pink stuff, and your stomach's fine. Couldn't get it, and I felt my stomach was rupturing. I, I was on the plane, and I was so glad I, I, I was able to leave, um, to get some proper medicine because I had the tablets, but they, these tablets, but they weren't helping. Ah, uh, so, so see what you need with India. Really, you should really just bad. take your own food. Yeah, like if you're going for two weeks, just mm. take two weeks for a supply. Of right, food. right. Yeah, I'll pack you. it in my suitcase. Yeah, you know, yeah. All the sandwiches. Just, just in... When I arrive, they'll put it in the fridge, have it cool. What a great, great life hack! I know, right? You life hacker, you want to squeeze your little cheeky cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> no, but trust me, if you go to India. You will have a stomach made out of uh, iron mm. before the end of the month. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're going to have to do a lot of training to get there. But. <laughs> well, and, and I like to enjoy when I'm out at places. So I don't want to be continually running to yeah. the, the loo. Uh, and so, since I used to suffer very badly from IBS, it was just not a yeah. uh, thing. So, so in terms of... Um, so I was thinking life access. What is it that you know that could be useful to other people. Like, for example, I don't know. Like... Well, let's talk about IBS for a second. Okay, yeah. IBS. So, at the moment, I'm suffering from gout. So, you, you can, if you saw my big toe, it's it might, it's larger than the toe on my other side. So, it's making it difficult for me to walk. Now, when I was um, in, uh, I had a gig in, in Rockville in, in Washington, right? And, and I'd, I'd cancelled so many other um, uh, opportunities, but I felt that the company that I was doing work for was not going to give me any more opportunities if I keep cancelling. And I was cancelling them because I was suffering very badly from gout for three for three months. So I just thought, oh no, I can't go to the States because all the food that they have there is fast food, it's burgers, it's stuff like that, which will just make my, my gout worse. Anyway, they sent fly me over, right? And I'm supposed to stay in the Hilton Hotel. Yeah. But for that some bizarre reason that place is totally full so they put me in a hotel opposite it that that one called the even hotel it was called because all the numbers on the doors are even okay right well, and in your bedroom yeah you have a gym you you have a gym it's not as luxurious as the hilton but there's a gym half the room is a gym and you go down to eat and everything has um a vegetable, a green vegetable. Everything is has a green vegetable in it. Yeah, and it's called kale. Everything is kale based. Anyway, I'm thinking, oh, I hate kale. It's horrible, horrible stuff. And in fact, you've just seen me throw away uh, um, an empty packet of kale um, because I've been suffering from um, uh-huh. uh, gout. Uh, anyway, suddenly the gout goes. So I realized that kale is doing something. And and then when I Googled it, I found that gout is to do with uric acid and it makes my my blood system um, very acidic. So things that make your blood system acidic, sugar, alcohol, blah, 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 blah. So I'm not drinking. I'm trying not to eat, you know, um, fast food because of the grease. Anyway, here's the thing. My gout goes. Yeah. So I'm trying to learn to eat anything kale, kale omelets, kale. (laughs) <laughs> kale based whatever kale chips but also the ibs goes wow so i didn't know that it's just like it was a side effect of me having this kale uh, and in in this place they only ever gave you alkali water wow i didn't even know there was alkali bottles of alkali water and so you know if you if you're suffering from um acidic you know you've got a pH level, yeah, and you want that to be so. Then drink acidic water, acidic water, alkaline water, alkaline water. water. <laughs> alkaline water. But, I didn't know that. Oh, I mean, right. I mean, everyone knows that now because yeah. there's the, these these kind of like network marketing businesses that sell these uh, units that sell alkaline 
uh, lining uh, kind of systems. But yeah, yeah, it was that. So those are that was a, a health life hack. Kale, kale, kale. There we go. Oh, kale. <laughs> have you heard? Have, have now you ever, I'm a yaga yaga. <laughs> have you ever taken lemon juice? Yes. And uh, what effect does that have on your system? Mm. I only take lemon because because it's bitter and it goes with my personality. Okay, all right, well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so what is? What is I, the I've never seen any impact. I do try and take lemon and whiskey and lemon and oh, stuff right. and okay. you know for for, for no, bad colds and, and things like that. One of those you drink lemon water in the morning mm -hmm. uh, on an empty stomach and that, that alkalizes your your body. Oh, that's interesting because uh, green tea also is good for gout, which I'm having, and there's a lemon slice in there, which I got from my curry lentil. <laughs> lentil. <laughs> They'd given me a lemon slice, and, I, and I've kept and stuck it in my... And you do, as you do, right? Because lemon, lemon mm. is very good for you. But yeah. here's the thing. I think lemon is actually acidic. It is. But, but when it's in your body, it, go, it alkalizes it. Yes. Isn't that weird? So it's lemon and also the other one is apple cider vinegar. Raw mm. apple cider vinegar also mm. turns uh, alkaline yeah. in your body. So. Yeah. And I used to buy these lemons to cut up to, to, to do exactly what you're saying. But then I, I forget to cut them up. And then like six months later, there's a moldy old lemon in my ah, fridge. Yeah. <laughs> cut them up. It's always useful. Yeah. So, so if you had to tell me, the, what is a secret to, um, uh, to Benchai's success in life? In which area? Happiness, friends, um, mm. you know, finance. Well, why don't we? Um, why don't we go? With no, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm yeah. serious because because I think people people look at a person finance, yeah. and they think he's he's really successful because he's got a billion followers no. on, on Instagram. So what or, I just mean, or he has, seems yeah. to have lots of money, and they yeah. say, or or they see somebody and and there's lots of. Uh, I'm sorry for any, any ladies uh, listening to to this. But you, you know, like if a guy has lots of women, he's considered successful. Is whereas he? The, well, I'm, I'm apparently, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. Whereas women have a different perspective of a lady who's surrounded by lots of guys. Yeah. So I, which I think is very sad, personally. Yeah. It's a very sad thing. Yeah. So, so what area? I just think well, just, people. Just, um, <laughs> if I had huge muscles, I don't have huge muscles. But if I did, that some people think, oh, he's such good looking. Like you, look at you, look at the rippling uh, um, <laughs> bipeds you have. Is it bipeds? I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. That's not what they right. are. But yeah. Yeah. So, so people kind of look at success differently. Which area are you asking me? I about? just, I mean, the whole of your life. If you had to say in all your life, in all areas, what's been the common denominator that has allowed, enabled you to be successful? Mm. Like, is it your attitude? Is it your mindset? What is it? You know, like, is it some belief system you have? Is it some perspective you have on the world? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I won't but, give up. That's the thing. Okay. I will not give up. Yeah. You, you piss me off, you, you, you try and put me down. I will still try and get where I want to go. Tenacity, basically. Um, well, if, if I had tenacities, then, then yeah. that would be great. But I think I have a million acities. Okay. It's, it's a bit like... I um, mean, ten is too small for me. Yeah, okay. But, <laughs> but, but it's just persistent, you're saying. <laughs> Don't steal my jokes for your I'm not. I'm, I'm a sit-down comedian, I, remember? Yeah, he's, I can't do sit-down comedy. <laughs> I have to stand up because, you know, um, because of my muscles, uh, they, they need to be moved. So, but in terms of like, um, so you're just saying you just, just, just push, push, push. You know that song by Chubba Wamba? I get knocked down, but I get up again. Ah, I right. get knocked down. I, I mean, that, that really is it. It's like, okay. And I will find a way whether I go through you, yeah. around you, over you, under you, <laughs> if, if you're the blocker, yeah. um, I will find a way to get where I want to go to. And, and how do you see the world? Do you see the world as your friend or as your uh, enemy or your competitor? Well, how do you view the The, the universe, world? how do I see it? Uh, yeah, the it it's, it's a very good question. Um, about a couple of years ago, I just burst into tears in the car because I just felt overwhelmed by just immense love from from the universe 
Like, like you know, I wouldn't wish my childhood on anyone. Yeah, but the universe gave me that childhood to allow me to do things, and 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 I I just thought, you know, I don't need for anything. I could have been born somewhere else. Yeah. And had harder challenges. So, say I was born in 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 a country where the children are very mal, uh, uh, how do you say it? Malnut- malnutrition. Yeah. Malnutrition. Yeah. So they don't have much food. Uh, you know, there's a lot of disease being spread, and so the, the chances of of me surviving in that environment, no matter what my my attitude, uh, uh, yeah. will be very small. Yeah. Right. Yes. So I, I, I do feel very, very blessed. I feel very, very privileged. Uh, although, you know, I, from, from my perspective, I had a super tough childhood. Um, I do feel very blessed and, and I felt very overwhelmed. You know, I've got great friends, uh, Joe, who went at, when I've been in, in trouble, they've sur- surrounded, got rallied around, helped me out. People I didn't even know <laughs> would mm. suddenly come out of the woodwork. I'm thinking, what? I, I thought you hated me. No, Ben, I've always loved what you've done. You've inspired me. What can I do to help you? You know? Wow. So so this is like, this has been amazing. I, mm. I remember somebody uh, close to me put me into nearly a million pounds worth of debt. Right? I had so many people just come out, lend me money. I said, well, I can't pay you back. They said, I know that I'm, you're good for it. I know that one day you will somehow find a way and I'll get my money back. Why are you giving it to me? Can I pay you interest? No, you don't need to pay me any interest and you helped me out so many times in my life. So, you know, this is this is my way of, of trying to give something back to you. So your bank account in friendship was, um, so you just gave so much value. I, I guess, you know, relationship capital. I, I did a TED talk called Social Magnetism on, on how to to attract lots of great great people in into your life uh, and i guess it's that kind of aspect and i think also my childhood has has helped because here's the thing if i had come from a very privileged life i don't think so many people would be able to to connect with me because because of what i went through i think there are so many people who've gone through similar aspects before we started this interview you were talking about trauma yeah yeah and you were saying how how you know lots of people have trauma and i'm saying are you sure that's true and so uh (laughs) uh, so so anyway we were having that discussion and maybe if i hadn't gone through that trauma people wouldn't be able to connect with me so well if they hadn't seen some of the the sometimes sadness inside side of me um because of uh, of people that who are close to me who although I don't hang out with them and stuff I'm sad because they were my family right and every time I see uh, a wonderful family out there I'm so happy for them uh, because that wasn't my my paradigm so I'm thinking oh that's great that's super fantastic I see loving couples out there I think that's so brilliant it's just so great to see yeah, definitely. And mm. so, you, so jealousy is, uh, have you ever been jealous of um, somebody, uh, uh, like a couple or um, no. a family? No, I, I, I a tell, family? I, well, I, I tell you, I mean, the, here's the thing. You, first of all, we don't know what's going on in people's lives. So, so we know that there's a lot of people who show off their fancy cars and watches and all, what, but they're in masses, masses of debt. You know, so like we just don't know. Yeah. We we see people uh, externally showing the smiley faces and so on, and the happy family. But behind the scenes, they could hate each other. But they just—it's all show, you know. So we don't really know what's going on. Yeah. So I, I did that for fifteen years. Did so, you? Yeah. Oh, so. I, I I didn't know. I yeah, it's all part of the fun, right? Well, a- a- anyway, we, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So why would I be jealous of an image? Mm. right yes that's true it, it, it's crazy because it's just an image you've created yeah it really yeah. is yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right of, of which we so why would i and there's a there's a guy i i learned a lot from who who i was very privileged to meet once before he died uh, a guy called wayne dyer 
oh, right? Of course, yeah. And uh, so I used to read a lot of his books, and and uh, if anyone wants to to watch him on YouTube and stuff, lots of great tips and life hacks in there. But he he would one of the things he said is is if he saw someone with a car that he really wanted, he'd be thinking, that's really cool. How did you get it? Blah, 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 blah. And he'd be thinking, hey, maybe I can learn how to get a similar car. But he, he said, you never, I mean, it's so great when, when you see other people having what they want in their lives. Yeah. Right. But, you know, that's, a, that's a, I mean, it, you, you make it sound like that's common practice, but it's a pretty small number of people that have that as perspective. Most people would just get jealous and go, oh, you know, the, the, the haves and the have-nots, uh, they bitch about it on social media, going, ah, oh, all these rich people, they've got blah, blah, and why they haven't got But blah. here's the thing, mm. everyone, here's a life hack, everyone, including you and me, where we, we have the yin and yang, we have, we have have and we have have not, right? It's just where you are in the whole, whole, whole aspect. So if you're ill, there are people who are, iller than you hmm. if you're healthy there are people who are healthier than you yeah <laughs> everyone has that duality so because we know about this duality why not just focus on what we have and enjoy what we have okay rather than than what we haven't got yeah well yeah okay and then in terms of uh, life hacks what what are your top three life hacks and we'll go into detail in each one so what be your number i i wouldn't say they're my life hacks i i'd say that a lot of the the knowledge that if people want anything they want because of the internet no no other time in the world would you have this but you can find out anything about anything and get life hacks about anything yeah yeah you know like i was teaching people that hey did you know that google docs and word you just click on the the dictaphone um uh, uh, bit and you just can just talk in and, and it'll just record your voice and type it into a, a document. Like I'm thinking, so everyone's saying, oh, we need someone to take notes. I'm saying, well, actually you can get it automatically done yeah, for you phone. today. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, here are things that I, I think should be taught to people at school. Number one, the compound effect. The compound effect. The compound effect. I, I think it's the, the least understood um, concept that anybody can ever understand. And how would you describe the compound effect? The compound effect is simply this. You do something small every day and over time you then become this superstar in that area. Okay, but you know... Take, te say, 10 press-ups a day. Just that, 10 press-ups. Don't do 20, don't do 30, don't do 40. 10 a day. And over time your, your muscles will improve. And so what you're saying is over a period of time, just do 10, not just do no 10. More. Okay. But, the, but it, when, like, when we exercise, like I start at 10 and then next day or the next Yeah, you could I'm do 11. 20 and 30 and 11, yeah, 12, that's it, yeah. if that's what you want to do. But if you just do 10 every day. Yeah. Okay. But then over time, it, 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 hmm. you will suddenly, suddenly you'll be doing 10 faster and faster and faster. Just yeah. Okay. <laughs> or, or slower and slower and slower. Or slower and slower yeah, and slower. Just to, 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 you'll do a lot. So you'll play with that 10. Ah, right. I see what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's actually what I've been doing. I, I used I to, <laughs> well, I mean, I used to do, you tell me you did your gymnastics on the bus. I didn't know well, that you did your on, press ups on the bus. On the tube, you know, I do chin ups. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, my goal initially was to get to 20 in one go. Mm. And then I would go and I got to that and I was like, okay, well, how do I take it up? Mm. And it was actually to do less mm. rather than more. Mm. So now like on the tube, I'll do three maybe. You're but right. And doing it slow. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. I get I'm going that. up really slowly yeah. and then coming down incredibly slowly, yeah. lifting my legs yeah. up at the same time. Yeah. And so that even one press up takes so much, mm. um, or chin up takes so much out of me that, you know, by the end of the first one, I'm, I'm tired, you know? Right. And, and to get to three, you know, but yeah, you're right. If, if somebody said, oh, are you only allowed to do 10? And then you would carry on mishmashing it around yeah to to try to get the maximum out of those 10 yeah so and and so if we look at the compound effect in terms of finance anyone who can get a job can be a millionaire how 
all they need to do is invest um, 10 of your currency. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every day or every month, whatever you can afford into some kind of asset. And over time, that asset will grow and grow and grow. It's, it's possible for everyone to be, if you start it early <laughs> at, at um, say, say 21, 22, yeah. uh, you'll be a millionaire by 50 by the compound effect. And what asset would you invest in? Uh, I'm, I'm not a, that kind of, of person. But here's the thing. The first asset that you would invest in is a low interest because you don't have much money. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll have it, but you'll build up your, your savings. And then the more savings you have, then you start putting into to other assets. So you're not a, you're not a, a, um, a you, you don't understand stocks and shares. So you would invest in a stock that gives you regular dividends, right? Mm. So, and then have those dividends automatically reinvest into that stock. So whether the stock goes up and down, it doesn't matter. You're constantly increasing your stock. Now, as, you, as that increases and increases, at some stage you'll sell it all and you'll buy a bigger asset, such as a property, right? So, so that, that's what I mean. And then you'll start all over again. And, you know, I teach people how to create multiple income streams like this. So you have a job, that's one income stream. If you can save some, if you can't save, that's the next hack. If you can't save money, in other words, you need to look as good as your mates or, or the people around you, because uh, that's what causes most of the issues. Um, then, um, then you, you, you can't be financially free. People who can't save can't, can't be financially free. I know that sounds really horrible. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically don't follow the Joneses. Um, don't have a flashy car, but you, it's outside of your budget. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Joneses, Smiths, whoever you think is, yeah. uh, whatever. I mean, why, you know, I think that's very, that's a very Jonism kind of, um, you know, why pick on the Jones all the yeah, time? That's what that's I want they're, to know. They're a fairly I'm, I'm a sit-down comedian. Yeah. So, so <laughs> they're, they're unfairly treated. Exactly. Yeah, unfairly, yeah. Keeping up with the Joneses. I yeah. mean, poor guys. Because uh, internally, they've, <laughs> they've got massive debts. <laughs> yeah. They've got a family that's almost at the brink of divorce. Yeah. The, the kids hate the parents because then the parents have never been around. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, the compound effect really helps you in finance, health, anything you can think of. The challenge with the compound effect is it needs patience. Okay. It doesn't happen like that. So we see beautiful, beautiful people in their 20s. Yeah. And they're, they're, they, they regularly have junk food, you know? Yeah. Fast food. And they look beautiful, 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 beautiful. And then when they hit 30, suddenly they're obese. And so the compound effects is slow, 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 slow. And then some, at some point, things go exponential. Yeah. I've seen that in all the companies that we, I've started, you know, yeah, right. and, and, and people are saying, but we need to, to make all this money now. I'm saying, no, it's going to happen. We just need to keep adding value. We need to stay there. And we just keep doing and adding that value. And over time, that value increases, increases, a bit like my relationship capital, my friends and so on. Over time, most people think I'm crazy. You, well, you met me first time, thought I was a bit I of an idiot, nuts. really. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I'm serious. Yeah. They literally think, but over time they see that, oh, and then he adds more value and more value. Whereas other people who they've connected with straight away and they've done stuff together, suddenly they don't like them afterwards. <laughs> so I, I just prefer that compound effect kind of, uh, a way of dealing with things. Okay, so you p apply company effect to everything. Finance, relationships, um, health, uh, any area you want to, to grow. Okay, and, and what would be your um, second life hack? Uh, my second life hack is, is don't take the first step, take the first 500 steps in wherever you want to go. Why is that? Because I see people think, hey, I want to do this. This is my life dream. Hey, blah, 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 blah. They take 10, 20, 30 steps. And then it's too much hassle. Life gets in the way. Um, suddenly make up anything that will, will block them. But you take 500 or 1,000 steps on your journey and weird things start happening. For example... If you want to be a top 
dancer, singer, comedian, uh, whatever it is, yeah. You get on stage, you're fat. But, if, if, so I'm going to speak uh, specifically to, to an area that you're particularly interested in, 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 in the area of comedy. But if you went and, and uh, shook everybody's hands and say, what did you think of, of my set? And they'll say, oh, Joe, that was great. And then you say, no, really, what, I, I, I'm really interested in improving. And you're willing to be raw mm. and go home and cry because people didn't like you. Or say. So which is the bit that, and you ask them, look in their eyes. So challenge them when, 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 when they say, no, I loved everything. Because they didn't. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to say that. Nobody likes everything about everybody. It's just, just one of those things. Where can I improve? Take that back. Improve. So now we're, we're taking that. And you will also see things. You will also see things. Because now you're on the stage, not one or five or ten times, but a 500 times and you're understanding the audience much better you're understanding where to use intonation just understanding which jokes work in, in in the right places but if you only took the first 10, 10 20 steps and then did it 20 times and just thought like you wouldn't see all those little nuances mm. yes you wouldn't you yeah. just wouldn't and you wouldn't and here's the funny thing nobody's really interested in you nobody is really interested in you but when you're doing things over and over and over, suddenly they take an interest in you. So every week you've posted something about comedy, right? Not a year, not two years. Now compound effect is hitting it. Third, fourth year. Joe, I know you're a great comedian and you might still be a terrible comedian. Nobody knows. But they think you're a great comedian because you're constantly posting on your, okay. your social media. Would you come and do this? Now, by that time, because you've done and invested that time in learning, you actually have become a good comedian. Mm. But you didn't start out like that. So I've deliberately left some of my terrible interviews on YouTube because people look at me and they say, Ben, you're really great. You know, last year I was uh, between this time and now. I've, I've been interviewed nearly 100 times, right? But I, I, I just got better at giving better interviews because I've been interviewed so many times. But I've left all the bad stuff there so people can see that journey. Ah, yeah, because otherwise it just looks like you're naturally... Exactly, different. exactly. Yeah. But the compound effect helps improve you over time. And that's why even if, you know, you go to the reality TV show such as X Factor and, and, and the judges say, you're a terrible singer, you let me go get another job. But actually, if you are willing to just grow and improve every single day, one day, you become, if that's what you really want to do, mm. you and, would become an amazing singer. And, and it's, it's never linear, is it? No. Uh, you know, learning, it's, you, 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 it goes down, up, down, up, you know. It's, uh, or or well, just plateau. But some, yeah. at some point, suddenly you know everything about being and you've experienced it and you've practiced it and suddenly you're just there and that's why you know that's why i'm so good at being an overnight success yeah you know just take years yeah well exactly because i spent 20 years become uh, becoming an overnight success but that's so what people suddenly see. you're there yeah. yeah because suddenly you appeared on tv or, or wherever and suddenly you're in people's um you know awareness and it's like oh well he's suddenly just appeared from nowhere it, it yeah. is literally like that. Yeah. And, and again, that's a compound effect, um, working with that, the, you taking those steps. So like in the salsa world, it, you know, I, people have never seen how many um, uh, women have just walked off in the middle of the dance room because that was so bad. But I refuse to give up. Just refuse to give up. Yeah. Right. Now I'm not the greatest salsa person on this planet or, you know, but I can I, I can dance that dance pretty well to a high standard. Ah, it's like watching like a Linford Christie, you know, do the hundred meter dash. Mm. It looks like oh he's just walked out and done Boom. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, well, where are you? <laughs> yeah. We were you said we were going out for a little chat and, yeah. and you've already gone <laughs> Yeah. But he spent whatever decades training. Correct. Yeah. So, Correct. And that's with everybody. Like they see a comedian on TV and they go, oh, he's just appeared from nowhere. He must have been naturally funny, but he spent 10, 15 years, 
in the bar rooms, uh, being uh, picking himself off the ground, yeah. going home crying, crawling away because he was so bad, or yeah. he he made some mistake and upset ten people in the audience, whatever it is. With his joke, it was too close to somebody at that time was going through that exact issue he was joking about. <laughs> yeah. That's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's natural. And then you realize suddenly that that is going to happen. That's a hazard, of, hazard yeah. of being a comedian. And you say, look, guys, I'm going to be, you know, you almost prefix it. Hey, uh, you know, guys, I swear, I whatever it is, if you don't like that kind of comedy, please, um, you know, go to, go to the bar, get a drink and stuff and wait for me to be over. But I am incredibly funny, so you'll miss out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I will be talking about this subject. What so if, if this subject is a bit sensitive to you and you're going through it at the moment, again, please go to the bar or wherever to, to have a drink. It, it reminds me, Tony Robbins swears a lot. Um, and uh, he's always been slated for um, swearing. He's, yeah, but this part of my... Um, that's how I get change by, you know, uh, affecting people. You know, like if I don't swear, then I, you know, I won't have that big an impact. I, I yeah. would challenge his paradigm. I, I personally don't care whether he swears or not, but whenever yeah. somebody says, oh no, I need to swear to create impact, like, come on. Well, come it, come it, on. It works come for on. him. So find another way. You've just so, shown, you've just seen me get rid of a hula hoop, right? I've just yeah. rolled it across the, the thing. So in one of, uh, when I used to be on some of the stages, always brought the hula hoop. Because people would think, oh, wow, he's teaching technology or business using a hula hoop. How, how interesting that. One day I just thought, you know what? I don't need props. Okay. And swearing is a prop. Yeah. It's a great prop. It works for him. But it's a prop. And he's learned to use it very well. Yeah. And he's learned to use it. I learned to use a hula hoop. But I didn't want to use the prop anymore. I wanted to be able to be. So here's another life hack. Um called requisite variety requisite variety yeah i don't even know what that means all right so variety the ability to be like a chameleon right hmm. it's not the person who's the smartest the strongest the most beautiful who survives it's the person who's able to be like a chameleon and adapt to every single situation and environment Hey. Right. Yeah. Those are those are your survivors. Those are the people who not only survive but but overcome and become abundant. There we go. That's <laughs> it. And it, it's not a lie. Again, like you can you can Google any of these things that I, I'm sharing. I've never heard of it, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll Google it yeah. after this. Yeah. And 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 what other life hacks have you got? Uh, hundreds, of hundreds. There we go. This is this is going to be twenty three hours long. We're already into fourteen hours and forty seven minutes. Uh, this is going to be a marathon of a twenty four hour uh, of a uh, thousand and one life hacks from Ben Chai. That's what we're doing. Okay, so here's another life hack. The biggest lies are the people who say I don't lie. I don't lie. <laughs> They're the biggest liars. People say, I don't lie. Yeah, people say, look, I, I don't lie. Everybody lies. And the person they lie to the most normally is themselves. Oh, right. Unless they've got to a certain level and age and experience. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, well, the thing is, that the biggest people we would lie to is ourselves. Because, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. And if they stop lying them to, to themselves, they would all be successful. And how do you stop lying to yourself? <laughs> you just got to get rid of your ego and start listening to people who are saying, listen, Joe, you've got an issue here. You need to sort it out. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you <laughs> must say, no, I'm so cool. Everybody loves yeah, me. Why I would know, I, right? Why, why would I believe that? Yeah. You know, that, that kind of stuff. Everybody loves me, you know, of course. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think it's... Uh, very difficult for people to to take advice from their best mentors and and um, coaches. And you know who those are. Yeah, I who, know who are they. Your partners usually. Your yeah. children. All yeah. oh, right. Okay. <laughs> like that's my kid. I can't take it from my yeah. kid. I taught that kid. 
Yeah, I brought for those up, for yeah. those of you who have children. If you don't, yeah, well, then <laughs> then you don't have what I'm saying. Yeah. So. Did you have kids? Yes, I did. I, I had kids. Love more. All oh, right. Would you, you like to what do you have mean? some more with what me? What do you mean you had kids? Are they grown up? I think. Yeah, they've grown up. All oh, right. So, so yes. Okay. So, so <laughs> um, uh, here's another life hack. If you want your kids to be successful, start teaching them at the age of six. And what would you teach them? Everything that you ever learned. My, my kids are so far down the, the, the path. The rabbit more, 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 I mean, they're... It took me a long time to get where I am. They're, they're already there in, in their twenties, you know, uh, and and you can't. This is uh, this is a hard thing for for parents to understand, because uh, so a lot of parents want to give me their kids to say, okay, um, now they're twenty one, will you take them over? And saying, no, you, I, I've got to undo, <laughs> like yeah. fifteen years of you spoiling them. I don't, I don't want that responsibility because I, now I have to give them the hard lessons. But if they let their kids get on with their lives, don't don't give them anything after that age. Life will will give them the lessons. Yeah. And and definitely. and if you've got issues with your kids, just let them get on with it. And eventually, five, ten, fifteen years, they'll come back to you. And they'll figure it out. They'll have figured it out, and they'll say, "Joe, I'm so sorry, Dad." Perfect. Um, I, 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 I didn't realize X, Y, Z. And, and if they get kids, if they get that, then they'll understand yeah, uh, much that's better. It, yeah, that's when you do really understand is when you have your own kids. I'll tell you a, a very sad story. Um, there's this guy whose grandfather raped him. Right? Mm. Uh, multiple times. He went to his dad and his dad said, son, just keep it quiet, keep it in the kind. So, so of course, he grew up. Not this is a real story, by the way. Um, he grew up with all these issues. He couldn't speak to people. He tried to commit suicide. A whole bunch of of, of things happened. As he got older and removed himself from from these these various situations, he found out that his dad was also being raped by his grandfather. And that's why his dad, because his dad also had those issues. And then later on, he found out that his grandfather had been molested and so on. Wow. Yeah, so really, really sad, but it's really interesting that, you know, you don't, you don't really understand stuff yeah. And that's why I'm saying you just, you don't know. And, and for you to be, anyone to be jealous of anybody, you have no clue what's going on behind the scenes yeah, of this I guy guess. who today is, is pretty successful. Uh, and in terms of, you know, I, I've been on a lot of courses, on a lot mm. of seminars. Mm. What, like, what courses or seminars would you recommend that have the biggest impact on you? Or book? Book? Sounds like a chicken. Book. Book. Yeah. Book. But I, you know, like, I, I mean. A chicken goes into the library. Sorry. <laughs> to goes to the librarian and says, uh, book. And the librarian thinks, this is really crazy, but okay, I'll stamp the book, give you the, I joke for another day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm but a sit down comedian. You yeah, see. that's it. Can't well, help. So it's in do. my DNA. Yeah, it's in his... And we're sitting down. If I'm standing up, I don't know how to make jokes. Yeah. But when I'm sitting down, boom. Everything, comes into my head. Everything works. So, so, I mean, like, have you been on a seminar or, or, a, or a retreat or something that went, that had that effect on you? Mm. Like, no, not really. I, I think the biggest has been life and meeting people, random chats, um, you know. So, <laughs> you know how you do your chin-ups in the underground and stuff. So people are looking at you. I yeah. think that's just a way for you to get attention, really. It is, yeah. But, <laughs> it is. but they're really... You know, I I do similar things. I don't do chin ups or whatever, but I'll talk to people wherever. So yeah. this is London, and people say, "Oh, London's really unfriendly." But hey, Ben, you're just lucky because it's your personality. That's why you attract all these great people. This is rubbish. That's another silly thing for people to say. I'm in a restaurant with my friend chatting, and we see this man looking over at us, and 
So I just say, hey, uh, would you like to see some of the pictures that we're showing on, on his phone? It's like, yeah, okay. I don't know who the guy is. Ends up, he's a sheikh. We end up being best friends uh, because something later happened to him in his life. And, and, you know, again, compound effect of adding value to people. And, you know, had invited me over to where he lives. He says, I'll build you your own place. I'll build my mum one place and, one, and you can have your own villa. Wow. Right? And, so and, how, and that is a random me meeting this guy. How do you how do you randomly meet? What kind of mindset have you got? What what are you thinking when you when you're like in that for? A I'm not thinking anything. I'm normally thinking, hey, I've got my shopping to do. Blah 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 blah. Um, oh wow, hey, that's a nice, a cool uh, necklace you're wearing, um, Mister Random Stranger. Or I could be, you know, in a bar and I'm bored. So, so, I'll, so I, I've, I've shown people, by the way, this isn't a life hack, uh, you know, you can Google it, but I, I've shown my friends how to take over the whole bar. So a full bar of people, well, everyone in that bar will be your friends. Yeah. And basically you go and talk to every single person. Is that what you're doing? No, no. Cause they'll think I'm an idiot. So, so <laughs> what I do is I take my glass and I'd say, Hey, it's a great Friday, whatever. I just want to say cheers with you and bless your day. Boom. Cheers out. <laughs> Yeah, and you just go around saying that to, to, to everyone in the bar and suddenly and someone would say, where are you from? You've got a great energy and that's when you engage in the conversation oh. or hey, look, you guys look like great friends. Just want to cheer, say cheers with you to, to and bless your buddiness in, in a great way, whatever, you know. But you know, it, it's uh, a lot of people find it creates a lot of anxiety to go and, you know. I know, I know, but so what? I mean, you want to learn something or not? Hey, you, you know, that first step, if you want to learn how to take over a bar, it's like, it's, oh, it's, hey, you've got to do it. And then when it, when it works, you think, whoa, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Like nobody believed, it, especially in England, where mm. we're kind of a bit standoffish. Uh, yeah. That, 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 is, that was one crazy thing. I wanted to get over being able to talk to ladies, right? Yeah. yeah. So ev everyone has an issue. You're talking about anxiety. So I, I, I did something called extreme reading. And again, you, the, the, the trail of videos are, are in YouTube. Just Google Ben Chai and extreme reading, where I would just stand up in the middle of anywhere and read aloud. Nothing political. Nothing religious, nothing that will be divisive. So it could be a child's book. It could be the menu in a restaurant. You've seen me do this. It could be in the doctor's waiting room. You, you read the, some of the pamphlets there, just reading aloud. And I've done that in all those areas, right? And now, why was I doing that? I was deliberately doing that to, to try and be thrown out. Never got thrown out. Yeah. In so, fact, so, I was so offered at the theatre. I didn't know the, the person videoing me was the PA to the theatre owner. <laughs> so you were standing in the theatre and what you were reading what? I, I can't remember. I, th I think I had a, a book on me at the time. Yeah. Uh, and I read, read aloud. Um, I don't know what it was. It was during the interval. You, you don't do it in the, in the during middle. the performance. Don't yeah. do them, but that's just rude, okay? Yeah. Done it in a cinema during the adverts and stuff like that, but don't do it. In the first. That's just... That's just not right, yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm doing it where people don't expect it to be done. Okay, so you could be reading a book or one of the pamphlets there. Or, yeah, or the, the, the or funniest thing was when someone said, I don't believe you on the underground that you do this. Uh, and said, I, I'd like to see you do it here. We, I had nothing to read, literally nothing to read. Um, so we said, okay, read my credit card. So just read a lot the back of the credit. But by then I got good. Remember we talked about those yeah. steps? at reading aloud. And so now I'm getting good at that. And instead of just reading aloud, I'm saying, oh, it says on the credit card, blah, blah, blah. What do you think about this? <laughs> on the underground. So now I'm involving all the passengers. And that's you taking, so now you're thinking, and that's you evolving that, that, oh. that stuff. But if I hadn't taken those first, and my first extreme reading was in a dance place where, where it was so loud, nobody could hear me anyway. So that's my baby step. That's the next life hack. Stop trying to, to go from zero to 50 in one go. There are no shortcuts. Take your baby steps and get better and better. I hate these people who say, feel the fear and do it anyway. Right? I hate it because they're asking you to go from zero to over there. I'm stretching. I'm stretching you. 
yeah, and pushing your boundaries and increasing your boundaries. So by doing extreme reading in a place nobody can hear me, right? I'm, I've already got anxiety attack, but at least nobody can hear me. I'm stretching my boundary. Now I can do this. I'm bored with that. This is really easy. Nobody's here listening to me, right? Then you do it in the park, maybe. Maybe in the park. Mm. Don't do it on Speaker's Corner because that's where they... Well, you can do it on Speaker's Corner because they expect you, but that's you slowly building up your... Your, your extreme reading is is where people don't expect you to read aloud. Okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe the lift. Maybe the lift. Yeah. Then nobody will get on the lift, right? If you're. I've done it on the lift. Have you? <laughs> and, and and people, the door opens. You're reading, and they go, ah, we'll wait for the next one. Well, on, on the underground, I did it one time on the underground, and this guy asked me not to read aloud. And this, the guy standing next to him said, well, actually, I want him to continue. And they both ended up having an argument. I thought, I better, I better leave next time <laughs> because I now accidentally caused a, a fight, a fight <laughs> with these two people arguing. I was offered a job as a result of somebody oh. seeing it. That was in the theatre. I was offered to do extreme reading in a barber shop because this guy saw me. He saw a YouTube video. So he was, would you come and do? I think it'd be quite entertaining for, for my customers. So you'd just be reading. We'd just stand up. You're a random person with long hair comes in to, and just stands up and starts reading aloud. I, I used to do this exercise mm. where on the train, my goal would be to start at one end of the train and compliment every single person to the other end of the train. Brilliant. And uh, and if, that, if I hadn't got to my destination, I would just do it back again. Mm. And on the way back, people would stop me yeah. and they'd exchange uh, Facebook with me. Brilliant. Which is how I got 5,000 friends on Facebook. Wow. But it was so hard. Yeah. Like, the first time going all the way to yeah. was the hard. Well, the first two or three carriages were the hardest because mm. the anxiety would just be mm. through the roof. I'd be mm. sweating, mm. Uh, like your bow tie. Next, you know, like literally yeah. I'd be doing that. Yeah. But by the end of it, all the anxiety would disappear and I'd feel elated and really happy. And then on the way back, people would go, wow, this guy is super cool. Mm. Stop here. Let's have mm. a chat. Let's exchange. So I just exchanged so many Facebook with people. Yeah. Uh, random people that I'd just been saying hello to. That Are uh, they all beautiful in... in I, <laughs> no, I'm teasing you. I don't know. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. No, I was just doing it to everybody. I even did it to beggars. I even did it to beggars. Yeah. Um, they would just be confused. Like, yeah. What the hell? Can I have your Facebook account? Yeah. And let's say. <laughs> I and that's actually another interesting thing because a lot of people think that some of the beggars are, are you know, they're just going to spend the money on alcohol and drugs, which which is untrue. So mm. I I've sat on streets. Um, chatting with with some of these these guys, and I said, "Would you like me to get you some alcohol?" I said, "No, I don't really don't want that. I just want this X Y Z, uh, you know, food or, or something to get some clothes or, or, or something like that." So it, it's it's kind of interesting when you get to know people's kind of um, life stories. Uh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's uh, Ben Chai, and if you had to go back, Ben Chai to a younger bench no wouldn't change a thing wouldn't change it just what, just say would carry you give on. him a tip would yeah you give him a carry tip? on okay just keep going just keep just... going you see if i change and i gave him a tip like taught him the compound effect really early yeah early, something like that his yeah. total direction he wouldn't be that person coming back to him wouldn't be that person it would need to be a totally different... Yeah, thing. that's right. So, so I would just... You would just kill yourself in the process. I, 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 I would actually be... Yeah. I would actually be doing that. Yes, it would, you would keep changing it. Then First you start, time you learned that, yeah. didn't you? <laughs> Never thought about it. You've been asking all your previous guests I know, this, I have, yeah. this question. Now, now it's suddenly dawned on you yeah. that if I, if I gave them a tip, I'd be killing myself. Yeah, but you would go back. <laughs> so this is the, the loop would be, you'd go back, give I've them the tip. I've created a... a an alternative time, time yeah stream. And, and then the so the new ben chai at that age would be much better and then he go back and give himself another tip yeah which and he'll just keep improving it well here's you know? the thing here's the I thing i think here, here here's the thing everybody who thinks they're perfect isn't everyone who thinks they're imperfect is perfect because would you really want to if you were the perfect person would people really want to connect with you 
No, no, of course not. Because, well, for a start, no, there's nobody perfect. No, but would they want to connect with you? You, there's nothing they can hook with. How's your day going? It's brilliant. It's fantastic. You never have a bad day, right? Um, you never need money. You've got whatever it is in terms of relationships you want. You're you're just perfect. People, it's the imperfection that allows people to collaborate. It my weaknesses allows me to work with people who look after that weak my, my weaknesses. If, like, if you see what I mean. Yeah. So that way I can create a team. And we know that all the superstars in, say, football, yeah, who cannot work with a team as simply one person against 11 in, in, in English soccer. or if it's a, but in, Whereas when they work in the team together, we've seen, you know, in the early days of, of football, they, they go for these superstars. But then they couldn't work with the team. So they had to get rid of them. Uh, and this is Ben Chai. And is there any last message you want to say to people? Uh, yes, be an oasis in the storm. Be the oasis in the storm. Oh, and watch my TED Talk. And watch, watch my TED, TED Talk. Talk. Yeah. What, what's your TED Talk called? Again? Called Social Magnetism. Social Magnetism. Well, you just put Ben Chai and Google in, it'll yeah. come up. Yeah. It's, Social it's, Magnetism. It's been viewed oh, quite I'll a lot. I'll create a link times. anyway, don't worry about it. It'll be Ooh. There. Yeah. Perfect. I'll yeah. find it and I'll watch it. You little linker. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. Enjoy and effortless biohacking. Follow me everywhere.